In at five, Ed Gaines Cauldron. For those who don't know, Ed Gain became infamous in Plainfield, Wisconsin after he was found to have exhumed corpses from local graveyards and fashioned trophies out of the skins. His crimes were truly repugnant and thankfully he was remanded to a psychiatric institution before dying at the age of 77. Now very creepily displayed at Zach Bagan's museum is Ed Gain's Cauldron, which was initially used by his family to render hog fat on their farm but later had a far more sinister job at the hands of Gain. When found the cauldron was covered in dried blood and guts, so it doesn't take much to figure out what he had been using it for. After its discovery, people reported dark energy around the cauldron, even stating that they experienced mysterious illnesses and disruption of nearby electronics. People who have encountered the cauldron have described a feeling of unease, dizziness, and even anxiety. Would you dare gaze upon it? Coming in at number four, we have Ed Gein's cauldron. This is certainly one of the more gruesome relics on display at Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum, and it's believed to have belonged to the butcher. Plainfield Ed Gein. He's known for not only committing two murders, but mutilating corpses and fashioning items from human skin. Some of this morbid creation include masks made from real human faces, a human skin lampshade, and a female skin suit. Although his kill count doesn't technically classify him as a serial killer, he still served as inspiration for several fictional serial killers like Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Buffalo Bill from The Silence of the Lambs. This cauldron is said to have been a place for Ed Gein to boil body parts in, but it's also authenticity is largely unknown. It was auctioned off in 2015 by a man named Dan McIntyre. He claimed to have inherited it from his grandmother who bought it in 1958 at Gein's estate sale following his arrest. That's bleak as f the highest bidder was Zach, purchasing the little pot for $2,800. At the time, Dan said he was happy to be rid of it, as it was the source of strange phenomena. I mean, I wouldn't want that in my home. Now, Ed Gein's cauldron calls Zach's haunted museum home, where it is said to radiate negative energy. Coming in at number three, we have the Demon House Staircase. The original staircase from the Gary Demon House is said to be so haunted that construction crews walked off the job and refused to come back after its installation. Set back in a dimly lit corner, the wooden staircase rests on a layer of dirt extracted from the location famous for demonic activity. The Demon House was located in Gary, Indiana, and was unfortunately home to the Ammons family. It was said to be a portal to hell, and the demon seemed to emanate from beneath the stairs, the same stairs displayed at Zach's museum. There were reports of demonic possessions, a child levitating, and many other disturbing events. The family's matriarch, Latoya Ammons, had to undergo multiple exorcisms as a result. It was so bad that even the local police department and social services were convinced of its purported hauntedness. There are things in this world that we will never fully understand, like why Zach decided to buy the home plagued by demonic entities. He did shoot his documentary Demon House there, where he investigated the haunting. It must have left an impact on him because the house has since been demolished and the stairs continue to haunt Zach's museum. Coming in at number two, we have the Devil's Rocking Chair. This sinister chair is linked to a very famous investigation done by Ed and Lorraine Warren, and its story serves as the plot for The Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It. Zach actually purchased this chair for $67,000 just hours before the death of Lorraine Warren. Ooh, creepy. The Devil's Rocking Chair was the site of the infamous exorcism of David Glatzel, who was allegedly possessed by a demon. The 11 year old at the time was being tormented by a man like demon who resembled a beast with sharp jagged teeth, horns, and hoofs. As the haunting progressed, the chair was said to be under the demon's power, and David would often see the beast sitting in it. Ed and Lorraine performed numerous exorcisms on David in that very chair. The final exorcism was a success, and the demon was expelled from David right into his sister's boyfriend, who killed his landlord shortly after. After. He pled not guilty due to demonic possession, a first in American history, citing that the devil made me do it. It didn't work, by the way. In 2019, the devil's rocking chair's exhibit actually had to be shut down because it was doing its job a little too well. Six different people shared the same disturbing experience with the chair. They all had bouts of uncontrollable crying, and one even collapsed above it. The museum having adverse effects on visitors isn't anything new, with ambulances having to be called in the past, but this was the first time in the museum history that an exhibit had to be shut down. And finally coming in at number one we have Dibbuck Box. In the number one spot is known as the most haunted object in the world, the notorious Dibbuck Box. According to Jewish mythology, a Dibbuck is a malevolent spirit that's said to haunt and possess the living, and the Dibbuck Box is home to the evil entity. This wine cabinet is so haunted that it actually served as inspiration for the horror film The Possession. The Dibbuck Box first became a sensation when it was listed on eBay, along with an extensive ghost story attached to it. After 
after some owner hopping it came into Zack's possession. Shortly after the Dybbuk box arrived in the museum, holes allegedly began to appear around the haunted cabinet. A downtown Las Vegas marketing executive also apparently witnessed a black cloaked apparition pass through the exhibit's door while doing a private tour with Zack. This haunted relic is no joke, even Post Malone was apparently cursed by the Dybbuk when he visited the museum with Zack himself. After touching Zack's shoulder, who was resting his hand on the box, Post Malone had a streak of terrible luck. In less than a month, his private jet was forced to make an emergency landing when two tires blew out. His house was broken into by armed robbers, and then he got into a car crash. Coming at number five, we've got the Satanic Idol. Now, Satan is usually quite a controversial figure. In the past, any mention of the name would have been associated with something terrible, especially as Satanic Panic swept the nation. Why won't anyone think of the children, right? Ah, uh, we love to assign weird moral values to stuff to ensure our political weight can be thrown around, but I'm getting off topic. These days, the jury is out on Satan. Many folks love the guy and worship him as ardently as anyone else would worship their deities. Some say he's a more forgiving figure than plenty of other gods and demigods. However, this idol doesn't seem to be associated with that end of the satanic spectrum. This one comes from the bowels of hell and brings with it misfortune and terror, or so they say. Let's take a look at this interesting oddity. With a misshapen horned head, piercing blue eyes, and a strange, unnaturally slim body, this doesn't necessarily look like the powerful demon most folks would assume is Satan. Artists can take liberties with the things they create, so don't write it off simply based on its looks. Apparently, a young hunter had been scavenging through the woods in Connecticut when he stumbled upon this cursed idol. He didn't really know what to do with it, but he took it along just as well. Soon after coming into possession of this horned artifact, he ran into an old man in dark robes, one telling tales of doom and horror. This, of course, spooked the hunter who discussed this interaction with his friends. Eventually, after some sleepless nights and anxiety, he was put in contact with the Warrens, who came by to evaluate the idol. They deemed it haunted indeed, and took it off the poor guy's hands. I'm sure he was very glad to be free of it. Ed and Lorraine strapped the devil thing in and brought it back to their museum, where it still remains. So if you ever get a hankering for some devil worship, or really, really want to look into some Gollum-esque blue eyes, you know where to go. Just be careful. That cloaked man in the woods is said to have been a worshipper of Satan, using the idol in dark and terrible rituals. I'm sure it's safe in the museum, but who knows? In at four, John Morrill's preserved thumb. Now this one's a doozy. Originally housed at a Tennessee museum, this mummified thumb belonged to John Morrill, a horse thief and bandit who would frequently dress up as a minister while giving fake sermons. And while giving fake sermons, his band of outlaws would steal horses from locals within town. He was once even written about by author Mark Twain in his book Life on the Mississippi. John died from tuberculosis on an unknown date, and his body was mummified and put on display. Parts even being sent to different places around the country. Now what's so spooky about the thumb then? Well supposedly it possessed the power to cause illness and distress in those that see it, confirming that a little piece of John still resides in the thumb, hell bent on inflicting pain and torture on those that come across it. In at three, Dybbuk Box. For those of you who don't know, the Dybbuk Box gained infamy in 2004 after an article was published in the Los Angeles Times, and from there it went on to spawn the horror movie The Possession. It is thought to be a spirit of a person who instead of drifting over into the next life, stayed put and has the power to enter the bodies of living people. It is known as one of the world's most haunted items and Zack paid tens of thousands of dollars in order to display it in his horror museum. Now the Dybbuk box will not be opened. Zack even stated that he was too terrified to do that. However, if you're over 18 and sign a waiver, you may just be given the opportunity. Godspeed. In at two, Charles Manson's ashes. Now this one is just downright creepy. Even Zach Bagans himself thinks so, and that man is not easily creeped out. Firstly, take a look at this. Yep, it's a painting of the notorious cult leader Charles Manson, famous for forming the Manson family and responsible for a series of nine grisly murders between July and August of 1969. He was later arrested in 1971 and died in prison at the age of 83 in 2017. Now, this painting is no ordinary painting because of of course, Zach Bagans has no time for some non-possessed fancy art. This painting is in fact made up of Manson's own ashes, specifically in the eyes of the painting, which somehow makes this even more creepier. It was painted by Ryan Almighty, an artist who was famous for using human blood and human remains to create his artwork. You can find this piece displayed alongside Manson's false teeth, his own personal art he created in prison, and even his TV. Now some people have questioned the legitimacy of the painting, but Bagans has been quoted in saying, I know exactly who was there, who got some of the ashes, the various people who grabbed the ashes to throw them in the air. I have all the footage. I'm really strict about how I display things, and I know they are all legitimate. 
This is legitimate. Well, there we have it, folks. And lastly, in at number one, Peggy the Doll. Zach Bagan's haunted museum is now the proud owner of Peggy the Doll, a doll that is apparently so sinister, just looking at it will cause pain, suffering, and even heart attacks. Katrin Reddick believes that just looking at an image of the doll causes her to suffer from severe heart trauma. Spooky. Peggy was transported to the museum with a bag over her head, and a warning had to be displayed before any camera looked upon it. That's how dangerous and out of control she supposedly is. On one particular occasion, Zach asked for the help of a psychic to perform a seance in hopes of making contact with the demonic spirit residing within Peggy. Of course, the seance rumbled nothing but fear in all that witnessed it, but sadly, no demon made itself known. Coming in at number five, we have Dr. Jack Kevorkian Death Van, also known as the Death Mobile. <laughs> Dr. Jack Kevorkian's van was a place many people spent their last moments alive. The 1968 Volkswagen van was where Dr. Kevorkian carried out as many as 130 assisted suicides in the 90s, and it has become a piece of history. However, at the time, the pathologist was met with controversy and public criticism for his taboo work on physician assisted suicide with terminally ill patients. He spent eight years in prison for second degree murder because of this, but is often viewed as a pioneer in the medical field and as an activist. His impact was so great that HBO released a drama called You Don't Know Jack, in which Al Pacino won an Emmy and a Golden Globe for his portrayal of the controversial doctor. Over the year, the death van has seen many different owners. Zach purchased this van for 32,500 from American Jewelry and Loan. When the Detroit pawn shop first bought the vehicle, it was actually featured on an episode of a TV show. Apparently, Long Island medium Teresa Caputo also passed by the van in their warehouse and said she felt something there. Visitors of Zach's Haunted Museum can peek inside the Dr. Jack Kevorkian's death van and see the exact spot where many people died. Coming in number four, we've got the toy monkey. What is it about old school toys that makes them so creepy? Like, at some point in history, every single toy maker decided it was time to stop making them look that way and move on to much cuter, cuddlier, cooler, and overall less frightening things. Maybe tastes changed, or folks just collectively woke up to the fact that they were letting their kids play with nightmare objects, but regardless of the reason, I'm glad we've left these designs in the past. Dredging up these figures makes for some good, spooky times, though, right? Take this toy monkey, for example. Would you buy your kids something like this these days? I'd wager no, and for good reason. Not only is it unsettling to look at, plenty of similar monkeys have been featured in the spookiest of scenes across Hollywood, but there's a lot of dark energy imbued in this particular monkey. The one at the Warrens Museum is said to carry a terrible curse. Hell, it was even featured in Annabelle Comes Home. So what does a little monkey have to do to earn such a reputation? Well, this one seems to stalk people, torment them, and then kill them. Oh no. Imagine this thing suddenly appearing in your life one day, then as time went on it started popping up in places you know you didn't leave it. Little monkey symbols might be heard crashing in the middle of the night and disembodied shuffling can keep you from sleeping. All that's creepy, but it's still just a toy, right? Hold up. Did its eyes just glow? That is some monkey business I want no part of. But hey, at least this one in particular is locked away and not to be recirculated into the general population of antique monkey toys. Well. For now, anyway. Coming in number three, we've got the Shadow Doll. Now, we've all got a particular cursed doll in mind when it comes to the Warrens, and now she's the star of a major motion picture franchise, so it seems that she's always gonna come in first. But there is another doll at the museum that should elicit at least the same amount of fear. That's right, I'm talking about the Shadow Doll. This thing is downright but ugly. Like, Annabelle as an OG Raggedy Annie is kinda creepy, and they had to make sure they punched up the creepiness with some porcelain features and unnerving eyes for the movie. But if they made a movie featuring the shadow doll as is, I think they might actually have to make it less creepy. For real. I don't know if big movie theater chains would allow something like this on their screens. Feels like something out of a snuff film, maybe a low budget exploitation flick. Nobody's looking at this and saying, oh yeah, I want to watch a whole movie based on this thing. Worse yet, the shadow doll seems to carry a much more terrible curse than most. Plenty of cursed dolls require you to be in the same room as them in order for the worst of the effects to hit you. But the shadow doll just needs you to view a picture of it to generate risk. Just looking at it means there's a chance it'll visit you in your dreams and kill you there, Freddy Krueger style. And based on looks, I don't think it would make it fun like Freddy does. It would just be brutal and upsetting. Goodness gracious. Coming in number two, we've got the Pearls of Death. These are known for their outrageously dangerous powers. They might just look like a nice set of pearls waiting to be adorned by the fanciest of folk, but be warned, the glamour is not worth the price. And I'm not talking about how much you pay for them. No, it is not money that these pearls want, it is your life. Owners of this particular string of aquatic orbs have complained time and time again of the necklace constricting around their throat and choking them. 
According to the first woman to adorn herself with this luxurious item, she felt as if she was being strangled as soon as she put them on. She attempted to take them off, but was unsuccessful. Panicked, she rushed out to request help, and it took multiple people yanking on the string to finally set her free. Since then, people have been very reluctant to wear these pearls. Some believe that a Satanist or black magic worshipper cursed the necklace before it was given to the unfortunate woman. Kind of like the opposite of a holy person blessing an object. How fun. I wonder if we got a priest in there, whether they could cancel out the curse. I suppose not too many people are willing to test whether or not the pearls are still strangling. And finally, at number one, we've got Annabelle, the Warren Museum tenant who needs no introduction, the mistress of the glass case, the shadow clar of college boyfriends, the mega million movie star herself, Annabelle. What a classic curse doll. Honestly, I'm sure the museum could liquidate most of their other objects and still have a similar crowd come by if they just kept Annabelle. Legendary. She looks a little different in real life than in the movies, although I'm sure this is true of any movie star. We've already discussed her raggedy any appearance, especially compared to the more porcelain figure in the flicks. However, this doll makes up for a lack of spooky looks with a plethora of terrifying tales. After being gifted to a nursing student, Annabelle started acting strange. She'd move around the house on her own and leave little notes to the girls living there. Eventually, she would attack and strangle the boyfriend of one of the students, leaving them desperate for help. The Warrens soon arrived and whisked the doll away. However, they seemed to know just how wretched and terrible she could be, and as such, they locked Annabelle away in a holy box. This seems to keep her at bay, but who knows? Someday she could break free once again. I'm sure there are plenty more extra cursed and haunted objects held at the Warren's Occult Museum, but today we've only got time for five.